What is going on guys and welcome to the patch 9.0 Fire Mage Guide. In today's video we're going to be covering everything you need to know about Fire Mages going into Shadowlands. We're going to be talking about legendaries, covenants, talent choices, and all the little tweaks and changes they've made since uh, Battle for Azeroth. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Now as a quick disclaimer, video guides are not always going to be relevant. Obviously if there's more tuning changes that happen, things might change and the information that's found in this video might not be accurate. So please consult your trusted information sources, whether that's Wowhead or Altered Time. Um, just make sure that if you're watching this video in the future, that things might change. Alright, kicking things off, let's talk about Legendary. So there is one in specific that's performing best um, out of all of them, and that's going to be Firestorm. This Legendary occupies the shoulder or finger slot, and it essentially gives you um, a 5 second buff that allows you to spam Pyroblasts and Flame Strikes um, that have no cast time and be guaranteed critical strikes. This means that you don't actually have to convert Heating Ups into Hot Streaks. You can use every Global on a Pyroblast. Um, it's like a little mini boosted combustion. It's absolutely insane. The reason that you want to use this in your ring slot is that there aren't that many rings in the raid and the shoulders you can get from the raid are actually higher item level than the legendary you can use so ring slot for this legendary is generally um, where you're going to want to grab it in this should be your first priority um, of course crafting it with the stats that you utilize the most is going to be your best option but generally speaking haste and verse is a solid bet when you're crafting it the other legendaries that are worth noting here are going to be Feverd Incantation, Disciplinary Command, and Temporal Warp. These are all legendaries that are simming quite well as it stands, but again, this is very early and we still don't have all the data. So um, as of right now, if you're going to be going into the Mythic Raid in the first few weeks, Firestorm is a safe bet, and I recommend taking this one as your first one. The Fire Legendary drop locations and everything else I'm going to be talking about in the guide is going to be linked down in the description below, should you guys want some more reading material. Okay, now we're going to attempt to, to briefly cover each covenant. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Of course, like I said before, links to the Wowhead articles are going to be down below. Should you want to read everything that's related to covenants, because there is a lot, um, and for the sake of time, because I don't want to waste your time, and it takes a lot of my time to talk about this for 30 minutes, I'm going to briefly cover all of the covenants, um, talk about the main abilities, and then we're going to talk about which one is performing the best, and what you should choose in terms of, uh, of conduits. So let's Let's touch base with Kyrian. So Kyrian gives you an ability called Radiant Spark, which basically just puts a damage over time ability on the target, um, which increases your damage with the next five spells um, by a certain percentage each rank. And you of course get the Summon Steward, which gives you a utility ability, um, which is basically a file every five minutes. It's like a, it's a little potion you can drink. It removes bleeds and some other shit. Um, don't play Kyrian. Uh, Venthyr. So Venthyr gets Mirrors of Torment. Um, basically what this does is it applies three mirrors to the target. Whenever that target actually casts a spell or attacks, uh, one of those mirrors that it has on, on itself as a debuff is consumed and it deals damage to the target and slows their, uh, their casting speed. This also reduces the cooldown of your Fire Blast. Um, it's worth noting that the final mirror on this ability, Mirrors of Torment, deals additional damage and silences the target. Obviously, this does not work on raid bosses, but uh, if for, you know, Mythic Plus scenarios and stuff like that, uh, those things do apply. Um, these mirrors actually can't be consumed um, more than once every six seconds, so that's something to, to keep in mind as well. And the extra ability you get is called Door of Shadows. It's basically a casting blink. Um, it's a utility ability that lets you just teleport um, a certain amount of distance away. I think it's like 35 yards. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Moving on to Night Fae. Now, this is my personal favorite, regardless of what the Sims say, but happily the, the Sims are saying that Night Fae is the best. The ability you get is called Shifting Power. It's a four second channel and each uh, one second of the channel deals ticking or uh, it's like a burst of AoE damage to enemies within 15 yards and it reduces the cooldown of all of your mage abilities by 12 seconds over that channel. So that ch over four seconds, uh, that channel will reduce all your cooldowns by 12 seconds. So that's Meteor, Blink, Fire Blast, Phoenix Flames, Combustion, you name it, it's reducing it. Uh, it's a pretty amazing ability and this is reduced by haste in my testing. So the more haste you have, the less time it's going to take to channel that ability and the faster you will regain your cooldowns. 
The second ability, Soul Shape, is a blink, teleports you 15 yards forward, and increases your movement speed by 50%. This can be reactivated to teleport again, and it lasts 12 seconds. So, as you're seeing here on screen, uh, just a little bit of testing, this allows you to cover a massive amount of distance in a short burst of time. You can think of it like having an extra blink, essentially, or an extra shimmer. Um, it's honestly insane. It's I, just, I can't I can't, say, I can't say anything bad about it. It's so fucking good. Um, it's really fun to use if you don't mind being like ah yeah yeah and like little you know blue and night fae theme. Um, it honestly is an amazing ability just to have it on your action bar to be able to blink out of something when your shimmers are down, which you're most likely using on raid encounters to move out of shit anyways. It's honestly amazing. And last but not least, we have Necrolords. Now, the first ability you get with Necrolords is Deathborn. It increases your spell damage by 10% and lets your fireballs hit an additional two nearby targets for 20 seconds. Your fireball just essentially shoots out two additional projectiles. Um, and the second ability is Fleshcraft. You channel it for four seconds and it creates a, an absorb shield uh, based on 20% of your maximum health. Now, the important note about Fleshcraft is that if you channel it near like a really big boss or like a really strong enemy, um, you can actually increase the power of that shield up to 50% of your maximum health so that's uh, something worth mentioning as well if you guys would like some more in-depth information about what each covenant offers i urge you guys to go check out toe grinders post on the altered time website it's linked down below he goes a little bit more in depth than i'm going to in the video and talks about what each soul bind allows you to take in terms of traits now moving on to conduits now it's important to note here that these are all assuming equal item level. Of course, if you drop a higher item level flame accretion and you have a lower level inferno cascade, it might be a DPS gain to put in uh, that lower leveled ranked one um, over an infernal cascade, for example. So just make sure you're simming yourself um, constantly when you get upgrades. But in terms of single target ranks, um, infernal cascade is the number one priority, followed by control destruction. And then you have your covenant specific uh, conduit. In this case, I have discipline of the grove. And then you have flame accretion. As for AoE, Infernal Cascade remains the best conduit to use. And then we have Master of Flame, which increases flame strike damage and increases the radius. You have, again, uh, your Covenant specific conduit. And then you have Control Destruction, followed by Flame Accretion. All right, moving into Talents now for the first row. Again, we're met with the same three choices we had from the last expansion uh, Firestarter, Prime Maniac, and Searing Touch. Searing Touch is most likely going to be the go to talent here. Firestarter might see some gameplay for certain niche encounters or niche mechanics, but other than that, Searing Touch, generally the go-to. Second row, we have Shimmer, Blast Wave, and Blazing Soul. Again, Shimmer, too good to not take. Allows you to move out of stuff very quickly while casting. Blazing Soul might be used for, you know, raid encounters or raid mechanics that require uh, extra defensives. Blast Wave is generally not used ever. So Shimmer, again, go-to talent. Third row, we have a new one called Focus Magic. Focus Magic is just, it's a talent you take and it gives you a buff that you can place on a party member or a raid member. <clears throat> um, it increases their chance to critically hit with spells by 5%. And when they crit with a spell or an ability, um, it grants you 5% increased intellect and critical strike chance for 10 seconds. Um, it's currently not simming very good. So, um, and, it, and it's comparing, it, you're competing with a rune of power. So it's, it's probably not going to be good. Rune of Power right now is by far the best option. Of course, you do have Encanter's Flow for certain encounters where you might require a lot of movement or you're just not comfortable with the, the mechanics yet um, and you want to familiarize yourself before moving into Rune of Power to use it effectively. But generally speaking, again, Rune of Power is by far the best option here. Just make sure you're using it effectively within your burst cooldowns. For the fourth row, we have a new talent as well called From the Ashes. Um, this increases your mastery by 2% for each charge of Phoenix Flames that is off cooldown. Um, and every one of your direct damage critical strikes reduce the cooldown of Phoenix Flames by one second. Uh, currently it's not performing very well and I would advise not taking it. The choices here are going to be between Flame On and Alex Shaz's Fury. Alex Shaz's Fury I've actually enjoyed personally playing on the beta um, with it. It's really great actually. Um, obviously you do have to be in melee range. Um, but what it does is it, it always allows your Dragon's Breath to critically strike for 50% increased critical strike damage, and it contributes to your hot streak heating up generation. Um, and when you do get the buff after you use Dragon's Breath, it increases the damage your next Pyroblast or Flame Strike does by 35%, which is really nice. Um, so for AoE encounters or Mythic Plus or Cleave stuff, um, Alex Shaz's Fury can be taken, but generally speaking, Flame Mon is going to be the talent you're going to be taking here. 
For the utility row, frenetic speed, again, really too good not to take. Ice Ward and Ring of Frost can be used in niche situations where you do require extra CC, um, but generally speaking, frenetic speed with the little movement speed boost you get from Scorch, especially in execute phase, really too good to pass up. For the second to last row, Flame Patch is gonna be very, very strong um, coming into the expansion in the first tier. Um, Living Bomb and Conflag, obviously, we know them very well. Living Bomb is generally used for direct damage cleaves, so if you're cleaving onto a boss where there's a lot of adds and you want priority damage, Living Bomb is really good. It's also great with very large amounts of mobs where you can cleave down, but seeing as how now we have an AoE cap um, and Flame Patch is actually uncapped or soft capped at 20 targets or something, um, Flame Patch is going to be the go-to for uh, Mythic Plus and AoE, and then Conflag is going to be your take it and leave it uh, single target. For the last row, nice, really, really nice change up here. We're actually gonna be playing with Kindling. Um, it's performing the best right now. Obviously, Pyroclasm and Meteor have remained unchanged. Um, Meteor can be better in certain scenarios. Of course, you're gonna wanna sim your character to make sure, but generally speaking at the moment, Kindling is performing exceptionally well, especially in combination with Shifting Power, uh, the Night Fate Covenant ability, the, um, the synergy between the two, allowing you to reduce your combustion down to as as producing as much as possible essentially is uh, is really really strong right now and i do advise taking kindling now for the rest of the video we're going to be talking strictly from a night fade perspective assuming that everyone watching this video is going to be going night fade due to the fact that it is performing the best i feel like i would be doing a disservice by going over every covenant and talking about all the different soul binds and stuff like that if you do want to read into that stuff like i said before Links are in the description below, but going forward, we're going to talk how to, to manage Night Fae um, and how to perform optimally with the uh, the abilities it gives you and the soul binds it gives you. So first and foremost, Shifting Power. Now, Shifting Power, like we talked about before, reduces the cooldowns of all of your mage abilities. Things like Combustion, Root of Power, Fire Blast, and Phoenix Flames all get reduced when you use Shifting Power. So the general rule of thumb here is you want to be using Shifting Power once your Combustion, Root of Power, and Fire Blast charges are down. Um, generally speaking, that's always after fire, like your combustion burst. So after you perform your combustion burst, you'll be using shifting power to kind of recoup some of those lost fire blast charges and put, um, you know, give give some CD reduction to um, to root of power and combustion. The next thing I want to talk about is a couple of the changes coming in from Battle for Azeroth. So as you guys know, we have new abilities now. We have mirror images. Some people have been asking, when do I fit mirror images into my burst? Simple answer is you don't. Mirror images is not a DPS cooldown. It's purely defensive. You want to use those when you can predict or you anticipate damage coming your way. They reduce the damage you take by 20%. So use this as a defensive cooldown only. If you do want to eke out a little bit more damage, you can use them before the initial pull, uh, before your combustion. But honestly, the damage is negligible and it's not even worth using if you completely forget to use mirror images and only remember them to use them you know during a, a, a high damage phase of a boss that's completely fine you're really not missing out on much so we now have uh, abilities like alter time uh, which essentially resets you your health and mana to the point in which you activated it so you can activate alter time run 20 yards away dragon's breath a mob and then alter time back and your health and mana will be reset um, that's something to note as well and the other change we're actually going to be using if you're not using flame patch is arcane explosion arcane explosion is now baseline available to fire mages so if you are not running flame patch using arcane explosion on two plus targets is actually a dps gain uh, it does cost a significant amount of mana but keep that in mind if you want to have it on your action bars just to spam and use um, for simple aoe you can do that as well so as far as rotation goes, I plan on making a separate video to go a little bit more in depth about this and show you real examples like in a Mythic Plus dungeon in Shadowlands, but uh, the TLTR is that now we're not using Meteor anymore and we don't have Bracers and we don't have Lucid, right? So we're defaulting back to the way it used to be at the beginning of BFA where you initially precast a Fireball and then before it leaves your hands, you're popping Combustion. Now that Rune of Power automatically gets dropped when you pop Combustion, we don't need to cast that. So you just cast a Fireball, pop Combustion, and then you're just straight up using Fire Blasts to convert them into Hot Streaks and doing as many instant casts as possible. Towards the end of your Combustion or when you're out of Fire Blast charges, you can opt to use your Phoenix Flames charges to spread that Ignite if there are adds around, but it also allows you to get more instant cast Pyro Blasts um, without casting. If you do have time remaining, of course, you can weave in some Scorches there to kind of get some more instant casts, but generally speaking, you're trying to get as many Pyro Blasts off in Combustion as possible. 
And when your combustion phase is done or your burst is done, that's when you want to be using shifting power. Now that your combustion's on cooldown, your root of power's on cooldown, and you most likely don't have any fire blast charges left, along with Phoenix Flames, this, this shifting power is going to allow you to recuperate those charges and reduce the cooldown on those abilities that you just used. Now it's important to, to note here that in the clip you're watching, um, Firestorm does proc during combustion, which means that I don't actually have to use my Fire Blasts to send out Pyro Blasts. I can just sit there and spam my Pyro Blast button as much as I possibly can for the duration of that Firestorm buff, and every global will be a Pyro Blast. Now that's not going to be the case when you first enter Shadowlands, obviously. It's not going to be the case until you get your Legendary, but if that's, you know, if that's the scenario that plays out once you get your Legendary, just take full advantage of the buff. You don't have to use fire blasts you can save them for for later down the road um outside of your combustion window to kind of convert more heating ups into hot streaks but generally speaking without the legendary the primary goal here is to try and get as many casts of pyroblast off in your combustion window as possible and if you do need to cast we end up using scorch because of the lower cast time all right well i think we covered pretty much everything i was going to talk about soul binds and um you know gearing options and stat priority and stuff but honestly guys it's, it's really early and there's still not enough data to kind of present to you guys and give you some concrete things to use uh for gearing options just like every other expansion item level is generally a safe bet when it comes to being an upgrade you get more intellect intellect is valued higher at the beginning of an expansion going to the first tier so if you are looking for some sort of um way to know what's an upgrade and what's not obviously your character is the best option but generally speaking item level upgrades and intellect are going to be higher um, in terms of what's weighed more for your dps so all in all i'm as per usual very excited for fire mages going into the new expansion i think fire is in a good spot there i think as far as i'm aware it's not performing as well as frost and arcane are uh, but that's just me talking out of my ass i have no idea where it's where it is in comparison to the other two specs from my testing on the beta i've played a significant amount of time so far we tested all the covenants and stuff uh fire mages do feel good and i think that if you've played fire mage for long enough you know that the first tier of any expansion fire mages are generally not the best in terms of how it feels and it's kind of slow and clunky but I'm willing to endure that for the sake of them being good later on as it stands right now I think they're they feel they feel fine I'm excited to play with the legendaries and do you know things like Torghast and all that shit but all aside from that um, I think fire going into the first tier of the raid is looking good for what it is honestly i don't really have complaints um my main gripe right now is phoenix flames is not g guaranteeing you a crit when you use it it's going to take some time to getting get used to that kind of thing but um all in all i think we're in a good spot and i don't think we can really go down from here <laughs> i think the the only way is up so i'm uh, i'm hopeful all right guys that's gonna wrap up the guide i hope it was useful if i missed anything or you guys have questions or comments as as always leave them in the comments below i try to answer everyone as much as i can and if you're looking for some more updated information you guys are more than welcome to follow me on social media i'm fairly active on twitter and you're more than welcome to stop by the stream anytime i'm going to be streaming a lot when shadowlands goes live and our main raids are from tuesdays to thursday uh, tuesday to thursday at 8 p.m eastern so you're more than welcome to come drop by and ask me questions there or again leave comments in the video below and i'll do my best to get back to you guys so i hope the video was helpful I wish you guys all the best in the new expansion, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.